I'm bringing back the Innocence double cock. I'm bringing it back to where it all started. It's a fire-based Bladefall Blade Blast Inquisitor using the Eye of Innocence amulet and the Martyr of Innocence staff. And I've created all the content in the game with relative ease and with a relatively low budget considering I started soft portrait super late and I was just too poor to make a real build. For those who don't know, the double cock mechanic for my build works like this. Cyclone is linked with Cast on Critical Strike and Bladefall. This is the first cock. And Bladefall leaves Lingering Blades, which then need to be triggered by Blade Blast. When I hit an enemy with Cyclone or Bladefall, I then ignite the enemy because I'm crit cap for both attacks and spells. And then when I ignite an enemy, I take 100 fire damage from the Eye of Innocence amulet. This in turn triggers Vengeance from my staff because that's given by Martyr of Innocence. That Vengeance is linked with Cast on Critical Strikes and Blade Blast. And Vengeance, despite the fact that it is triggered, can then trigger a spell because it is an attack. Any attack can be linked to Cast on Critical Strikes to then trigger a spell. So that's great and all, but the real ingenuity of this build comes down to timing. Even though Vengeance is really triggering only once every 0.86 seconds or so, this is actually okay in our scenario because my build needs many, many more blade falls than blade blasts because you want to get as many blades on the ground as possible up to 50 and then trigger all of them. Thus, the relatively high trigger rate of Bladefall and the relatively low trigger rate of Blade Blast is still a relatively efficient combination. And of course, the best part about this build is that your primary damage setup from Blade Blast is in the 7 link. Other benefits of self-hitting include enabling caster damage taken, self-ignite, the wrapped in flames notable, which gives you roughly 14% damage and some slow, chill and freeze immunity, 6% permanent elemental damage reduction from your Pantheon, leech, and movement and attack speed from the hot-headed jewel. And before I go into the POV, other things to look out for in this iteration of the build that are in addition to previous iterations include Critical Strike Immunity, Berserk Uptime While Mapping from Warlord's Mark, Inquisitor-based Regen, and Overleash from Petrified Blood Setup. The tree is fairly left side centric, and this basically means I don't want to gear into Suppression, but I want to point you towards four big keystones, none of which you should miss. Pain Attunement enables low life and gives you 30% more spell damage, and this is enabled because we have Petrified Blood. Mind Over Matter is weird, but because I'm using Devouring Diadem, which gives us Eldritch Battery, Mind Over Matter in this case lets us use our Energy Shield both as mana and also as the Defensive Layer for life. Iron Will gives pretty good value because I'm an Inquisitor with about 300 Strength, and then lastly, Avatar of Fire helps us convert all the way. There are other ways to get more conversion on this build, but going for Avatar of Fire plus the Fire Mastery I think is the most easy way to do it. I'm also running a Brutal Restraint Jewel, and this makes gearing far easier because it gives a ton of dexterity. Each of these small nodes gives you 2 dexterity, and then there's some notables that give 20 dex, 5% dex. You can also look for other good notables like Blind, Accuracy, Cold Res, Elemental Damage, Global Crit Chance, maybe Frenzy on Kill if you don't have Frenzy Generation from elsewhere, Onslaught on Kill, Attack Speed, Flash Charges Gain, Flask Effect. Basically, there's a ton of good Brutal Restraint options, and I would generally just use this drill because it makes gearing so much easier when you don't really have to worry about dexterity. There's a few core uniques to this build. The first is the Martyr of Innocence Staff, which I've already mentioned. This does need to be 6-linked. Devouring Diadem is a helmet that I'm using to make everything much easier. You have quite a few mana costs when you're going for a double cock setup with casting damage taken setups. If you just have Eldritch Battery, all your mana issues become a remnant of the past. Brass Dome is a fantastic chest to this build, but it's really annoying to color. Generally speaking, this is one of the best defensive chests in the entire game. And in order to get three off color, so I'm going three blue and three green, you want to use Harvest Swaps for switching red sockets into green or blue sockets. Alternatively, and probably the easiest thing to do on trade, you could just buy a 6 white one. This will cost somewhere between a range of 8 to 10 exalts. And it just comes from double corruptions from Alva. My gloves are really important. They give you the final part of the conversion you can get. You can also go for a conversion implicit, but I instead went for global accuracy, which is really important, and chance to unnerve. And that's just like 10% more damage. I also didn't have the money to craft tail and elusive boost, so synth boost happened to be fine. But alternatively, you could get stun muni from a suffix on your flasks. And also looking for stun avoidance on these notables. With the Eye of Innocence amulet is the other core piece. And this is anointed with prismatic skin just because you want to get more max res if you already have brass stone. Max res is more powerful the more you get it. Offensive annoyance are fine, I just don't think they're worth it, especially when you're running righteous fire. I'm using two rings that are prioritizing accuracy, resistances, and life. And one of these, or maybe both if you can afford it, want to be unset rings. A Sigin Vise with an open suffix that I can craft on cooldown reduction is my belt of choice. Of course, Head Under is really great, Torn Reclamation is really great as well on a low budget, and Mage Blood would make this entire build super easy to make but I'm never gonna use Mage Blood. I don't really like Bottle Faith that much because the crit is really easy to cap with just Diamond Flask and you do lose a suffix on the Diamond Flask. The biggest reason I'm using Bottle Faith is because I really want a big Consecrated Ground and because it happened to drop while I was running Cortex. 
Roommates gives us a little more block, which is helpful for Simulacrum. And as this class helps us get into the positive chaos resistance area. The last two are just to make us move faster. So the large cluster is probably the most flexible slot. I go for a spell cluster because you don't really have a good way to get arcane surge elsewhere. And then this megalomaniac is mostly to prioritize wrapped in flame and then two other useful notables. The reason I do this is because the fire damage over time medium cluster isn't really that great for this build other than wrapped in flame. You can go for it, but especially in SE trade, it's much easier to just find a megalomaniac. There are so many good nodes, life, armor, reservation efficiency, any of the damaged ones, fizz damage, fire damage, crit, crit chance, the list goes on. I've already mentioned this brutal restraint, and the Watcher's Eye is the second last mandatory piece. You really need to get ES gain for each enemy hit while affected by discipline. Otherwise, you will not have energy shield at all. The life gain on hit with vitality isn't necessary and can easily be replaced by life gain on hit with spells, a shaper mod on any of your rings. I simply go for this Watcher's Eye because it's more convenient for my gearing. A hot headed makes things a bit faster, and I get CB immunity here. I got this jewel for like 5C. And then a Repco Reckless Defense is the final mandatory unique. You need to have this so that you can actually be ignited when you ignite enemies. If you don't have this jewel, your build will not work. Finally, I have a Viridian Jewel. A lot of good mods to look for on here. You could go for Res, Accuracy, Multi. The skill jump setup is fairly annoying because you have so much socket pressure. So I put in my Unset Ring a Righteous Fire. In my helmet, I'm running all of my primary auras, so Determination, Herald of Ash, Petrified Blood, and Discipline. My other aura setup only has two pieces, a level 20 Vitality and a level 20 Precision, and these are linked with Arrogance. Now, this doesn't actually reserve 50% of your life, but if you know how Petrified Blood works, basically the moment you start taking damage or using skills, in this case, you'll get down below 50% and you'll never recover above 50%. In other words, we're always low life, but make sure you reserve less than 50%. I have this Arcane Surge here just to simulate the damage from Arcane Surge, but I don't actually use it. And then my boots have a casting damage taken setup. So when I'm bossing, I use Purifying Flame, Asmark, and Anomalous Blood Rage. However, when I'm mapping, I switch these two out for two reds, and I'm using Warlord's Mark and Berserk. And what this does is it gives you Rage Generation from Warlord's Mark whenever you stun an enemy that's affected by it, which is actually really high uptime while you're mapping. And then it enables Berserk, which just makes you faster, tankier, gives you a little bit more spell damage if you're using the Divergent Berserk. And finally, the two damage setups. So there's a Cyclone setup that's linked with Castle Critical Strikes, with Bladefall, Increased Crit, Conk Effect, and Awakened Spell Cascade. This wants to be level one the entire time because the more you level up Spell Cascade, the more AoE it gives. Bladefall wants to minimize the AoE. On the other hand, your Blade Blast setup wants to maximize AoE, and this is why I run Awakened Ink AoE in my Blade Blast setup. There's another cast on crit, increased crit, increased crit damage, and LE focus, and of course, there isn't an attack skill because this is in our weapon, which gives us vengeance. And as long as you have everything else linked, it will count as being linked to the primary attack skill granted by the staff. In general, this is always one of the most fun builds I get to play. It's a classic take on a classic build for me. I rarely get the chance to play Cyclone anymore, and especially with the nerfs to cast on Critical Strike and Triggers, a lot of people were worried about the viability of Cock builds. However, because of how strong Blade Blast already was, and for some reason people didn't know this, and Blade Blast getting another buff in this patch, it's resulted in this build being pretty strong right now, and probably even stronger than it was back in Ultimatum. And honestly, I was really worried about this build not being that strong, but the moment I put those two cocks in, everything just felt perfect.